Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of Tunnel Vision. I'm your host, Ryan Abraham. I am solo. So you can see I'm in the main box and you can see me up there in the uh, smaller box too. So we've uh, not had a regular Tunnel Vision show with uh, Keely Yor and Shotgun Spratling uh, for a while, probably almost a month now. We did, There's some technical issues doing them remotely and we wanted to try to do things in studio. Just not everyone's comfortable doing that yet. We haven't done a show for a while, so I thought, hey, why don't I just do a solo one? There's been some newsy stuff going on around USC, so I thought I could talk about that, go over those things. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can put them in the YouTube chat box. I will be monitoring that. So I'm hosting and, and watching those, so I'll try to catch anything that you guys uh, post up there and uh, address it. So things we're going to talk about today, um, there is a plan now to return to campus. So the rest of the Pac-12 outside of the California schools, I believe all student athletes are now potentially back for all of those other Pac-12 programs. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure everyone's back except for Cal, Stanford, USC, and UCLA. It looks like Cal and UCLA, from what I'm hearing, uh, they're pretty close. Stanford, uh, I have a guy checking on Stanford right now too. So, And with USC, what they ended up doing was having a Zoom call with players' parents uh, last night, Monday night. And uh, yeah, so they had a Zoom call on that. There was a bunch of slides, a uh, bunch of information. I'll go over some of that. Um, there wasn't a specific date, but this is the plan that they're trying to put into place. And we'll go over all that, everything that was said, uh, that what we were told uh, was going on that meeting. Also, there's been some news on the season ticket holder front. Um, there's some positivity there. Mike Bones sent out a couple of emails, the athletic director, two season ticket holders, and there's some options there. Yesterday, the first email came out, and then there's another one that came out today. Um, if you're a season ticket holder, you can essentially opt in and have the potential to have those tickets. So they're, they're at least planning for fans to be in the Coliseum, albeit there'll be some restrictions and somewhat limited uh, capacity. So we'll go over that. And if we want to talk about some Reggie Bush stuff, since we haven't really done that on Tunnel Vision, uh, here we'll put up a, a Reggie there. Um, you know, obviously the uh, disassociation ended uh, with Reggie Bush, so um, that's uh, that's good news for USC. It seems like Mike Bone was was pretty happy about that, and uh, yeah, so we'll uh, we can talk about that a little bit uh, if you guys want. Uh, also, just let you know there's a couple hours left if you are not a USCFootball.com subscriber, uh, not a VIP member. There's two hours left. You can get two months of access to uscfootball.com, all the premium content, the Peristyle message board for $1. So it's really cheap. Uh, if you've just been curious about it, it's only a buck. Might as well go check it out. Just go to uscfootball.com and that uh, story should be on the front page. Or if you can just click on join if you're not a member and uh, you can do that. So a buck, you get 60 days worth of access. Try it out and uh, let us know if you like it. All right. So those are kind of the topics on the table. Um, I'm going to be looking at the uh, the chat box. So we have, uh, Chris says, is it some fight on time? Yes, Chris, it is. Uh, Justin saying he's so ready for football. We all are, Justin. We really want this to uh, to happen. So a lot of like, let's go Trojans and things like that. So, um, and Justin said he's watching live for the first time in a while. So we appreciate any one of you guys uh, that are watching this live. We'll put it up on his podcast probably too. Um, let me go over some of the things that little newsy items that were going on. So the the Zoom meeting with the players' parents was very interesting. Uh, basically, going over what the the protocols would be and trying to make the parents feel good about, hey, here's what's going to happen if your son comes back to campus and then starts these voluntary workouts. So first, there was a schedule uh, they put up there. So from June 15th, a couple of days ago, through July 12th. Uh, the plan is to have virtual meetings and also the voluntary uh, weight training. So those would be things that would be on campus. 
Obviously, the players are not back yet. They're trying to come up with that date, but they can do that. They, they, you know, as soon as the players come back, uh, they can still continue to do these virtual meetings and stuff. But the voluntary weight training with different conditions um, that would go up until July 12th, starting on July 13th, uh, would be summer access, and that includes eight hours a week uh, weight training, conditioning, and film review. So by that point, July 13th. Now you're talking about middle of July. Uh, you know, we should know a lot more about how these, all these players are interacting on campus together. And then on July 24th and the, the next day through August 6th, uh, there'll be summer access, but they actually will have walkthroughs and that's uh, 20 hours. So there'll be 20 hours you can do there. And uh, I believe those will have footballs and things like that. So it's sort of like a precursor to fall camp, um, where normally you wouldn't have allowed, like coaches could go out there, but they couldn't have footballs with the players. This would be some extra time that the players could have, uh, footballs out there. Uh, you know, mostly because spring football didn't happen. And then from August 7th on, that's when fall camp would begin. As you see the schedules lining up, all of that pointing to there's going to be uh, a season that starts on time. That's at least the plan right now, which is great. So if you, you know, before the Pac-12 did approve uh, those on-campus activities that could start June 15th, but it depended on, you know, each university, what they wanted. Like I said, I think the rest of the Pac-12 outside of the California schools have already allowed that and they're, they got uh, players back on campus. California is dealing with some more regulatory stuff as far as the California government goes and the local governments. Uh, LA County obviously is, has been a hotspot for the COVID stuff. Um, so they're, so USC has kind of put a plan in place. They were trying to get approval from the local governments. Uh, once that's submitted, uh, they, they submitted the plan. Once it's approved, uh, USC is saying the players can return to Los Angeles. So that would be good. And I think a lot of people feel these players would actually be safer in this kind of more controlled environment than everyone else being out on their own. So uh, that's a good thing. There's going to be, to to take part in all this, there's a pre-participation checklist that will have a physical exam that the players will have to take. Uh, they're going to be tested for COVID-19 and the antibodies. Um, and there's going to be daily symptoms monitoring with a questionnaire. Uh, so, you know, the questionnaire, there'll be like a health questionnaire they'll work through. Um, and that will include, there's going to be a physical exam by the doctor, the antibody testing, like I said, um, and there's also going to be education uh, sessions, including uh, online training uh, modules. So uh, lots of education, lots of testing, lots of, uh, you know, just interacting with these players, trying to make sure everyone is safe and healthy. Uh, the, the return will be phased. And the Pac-12, they said they were going to use these like the pod model where you'd have like a group of 10 people. I think Washington reduced it to five. It just depends on what you want to do but there'll be these condensed lifting groups. So those will kind of be the people in your pod, those people that are, it's sort of like you're quarantined with those with those players, the way I understand it. Um, and they'll be phased in at the return. So uh, essential personnel that would be around, and this is, this is kind of interesting. So the strength coaches will be there, medical trainers, equipment staff, uh, football operation people to kind of help with the logistics, everything, and the nutrition people. What you're not seeing on there is coaches. So uh, the, the initial, with the players coming back, uh, it doesn't look like the coaches are going to be considered essential personnel. I think uh, the head coach might be exempt to that, but my understanding, you're not going to see assistant coaches. Uh, they'll also have daily health, uh, you know, the daily health and um, safety protocols will have the, that questionnaire we talked about for symptoms. They ask you, you know, fever, can't taste, things like that. Uh, temperature checks at facility daily. Uh, they always have to wear face masks. Uh, there's going to be mandatory hand sanitizer stations. And uh, the staff is going to be on site to control access. So the, the control staff there, the, the campus security, they'll control access to everything there. So trying to keep everyone safe. Uh, they'll also, all the players are going to have their own individual baskets for personal items. Uh, they'll have their own water bottle, equipment. Uh, you know, they'll all the cleaning will be done after your lifting group finishes. And uh, they'll have their training equipment uh, laundered daily. Um, as far as symptom protocols go, so what they're going to be looking for a player can get flagged uh, during the health questionnaire. So if they say, hey, uh, I have a fever, um, if they do that, they got to stay home, contact their athletic trainer, immediate, uh, trainer immediately and make an appointment at the health center. Um, if a player has elevated temperature when he gets to campus, uh, athletic medicine staff will be immediately contacted. The player will be isolated. Athletic uh, medicine and, and the staff and team doctors are going to continue to monitor and take that player's temperature to see if it, it stays the same, if it goes down. And they will be monitored, that player will be monitored and tested at the health center. Uh, if that player develops symptoms uh, during training, 
uh, they will be moved into isolation and a team doctor is going to be notified. Um, the players will be monitored and tested at USC's health center. And then finally, a player who has experienced symptoms, they must be cleared by a team doctor in order to return to team activity. So a lot of, uh, you know, there's, those are the plans that are in place for USC. Uh, that those were the, that, that was all expressed to USC players, parents, and, uh, you know, just trying to let everyone know, Hey, this is what we're planning to do, uh, you know, going forward. So it seems like, you know, pretty comprehensive list. I think all the schools are doing something very similar. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of let you know, like that, you know, that's what was going on. Let me look in the, uh, the chat room. We got Elsie Eccles giving the fight on over there. So Jasper saying hello, guys. Um, let's see. So Jasper says, was uh, really looking forward to see uh, Kyle Ford for sure. Brew McCoy and Drake London will have to step up. Yeah, one of the other things we haven't talked about on this show is uh, a couple of injuries. Elijah Winston broke his ankle, going to be out six to eight weeks, you know, probably beginning of the season-ish time. He could be back, but Kyle Ford, uh, the uh, wide receiver, five, former five-star wide receiver who came in off an ACL injury during his senior season back in 2018, redshirted last year, but did get into some games late, caught a touchdown against Oregon. He ends up tearing his ACL, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we broke it, the news on uscfootball.com. Very unfortunate. Great kid. If you see some of the pictures, man, he just like worked out. He really worked uh, on rehabbing that other knee. And now this knee uh, goes out. But, you know, guys like Tyron Matthew have had the same sort of thing. Um, talking to sources close to him, he's pretty optimistic right now. And uh, stay tuned. We might have some some more uh, Kyle Ford stuff uh, coming up on uscfootball.com. So make sure you check that out. Um, so let's see what else we got. Chosen one. Let's get this party started. Uh, BW, any word on if players will be required to sign a waiver a la Ohio State? Didn't hear anything about a, a waiver. Um, but yeah, that was a, that's an interesting one. We saw that. Uh, all right. So there is, that's the basic stuff of what's going on. We don't know. We should, I, I think, you know, in the next couple of days, I mean, maybe early next week, we should know players coming back. I mean, my guess would be Monday is the target date for starting to bring players back in that phased approach. So, you know, we might have a lot more information later tonight, tomorrow, Friday, uh, over the weekend. But I think by Monday, you're going to start seeing some of these kids, especially some of the local ones, come in. All right. Now, on the other side, uh, there's also the idea of like, well, say the football season starts, will there be fans in the stands? I can't tell you how many people, because they know I cover football, they'll ask me, hey, is college football going to happen? And then they're like, and what are the fan situation going to be? Well, I say my standard answer is they're on track to have college football. And what uh, everything I explained to you uh, just, you know, in the first part of the segment was why, you know, the protocols they're putting in place to bring the student athletes back, which is the first step to having football. And then, you know, the schedule is still lined up to have the game start on time. Um, so I think that's the big thing. You want to have the football games. The second aspect of it, people ask, will there be fans in the stands? Well, USC is preparing for that. And I think a couple of things happened to set that up. Uh, and Mike Bone sent out a couple of emails to the athletic director and pointed this out that Carol Fult announced that students would be back on campus August 17th. So the semester was going to go August 17th uh, to Thanksgiving, I believe. And also California saying, you know, Governor Gavin Newsom saying that uh, professional sports could start without audiences about a week ago, June 12th or five days ago or whatever it is. Not that it was specifically uh, addressing USC, but that it kind of opened up the door for USC to be able to say, okay, let's if, if football starts on time, what are we going to have in the Coliseum? Is this going to be empty? Or are we going to try to do something with the fans? And what they're, you know, what the email that Mike Bone sent out to fans the last two days really looks like they're going to do what it's whatever they can in a safe way to bring fans uh, back to the Coliseum, obviously with some uh, changes in, in limited capacity. So uh, they are preparing to allow fans and the, the process is what they're trying to put in place right now. They sent out these instructions to the season ticket holders uh, and there's an opt in there's a, you can opt out or opt in. So if you're a season ticket holder, you have a choice and you have until July 9th to do that. That's the deadline. So, uh, if you opt in, it doesn't mean you get tickets. It, it, you have the option of getting tickets. If you choose to opt out, uh, they're going to give you credit uh, for your season ticket payment uh, towards the uh, 2021 season. Um, some of this stuff like game day traditions, tailgating, 
the Trojan Walk, where the players walk in, uh, the Band Walk, Fan Fest. Uh, you know, it's they're going to be significantly limited and potentially removed uh, altogether because of the uh, social distancing guidelines. So anything that you think like, hey, this is a big group of people there. Well, so, it, there's always going to be the social distancing guidelines. So if you're if, if, if it's going to break those guidelines, then that event, whatever that tradition is, is probably not going to happen. Uh, individual tailgating stuff, it'll be curious to see what you do. If you have your family at your car, you're already quarantined together, it's a group of 10 people or less, or whatever it is by then. You know, it's hard to say. We don't know right now, but I would be prepared if you can go to the game. You might not be able to do any tailgating at all. Uh, all the fans are going to have to wear a mask, uh, which, you know, at all times in the Coliseum for what they're saying. And uh, we haven't heard anything about, you know, bathrooms. Like Dan Weber brought up on the uh, Peristyle podcast this week, elevators. When we're taking, you know, the media is taking an elevator up to the uh, the press box. If you're, you got to stay six feet apart, how can you have, you know, you can't have 10 people in the elevator. There's no way you can keep a social distance for something like that. Um, so they're still trying to figure that stuff out. There wasn't any word about that. You know, concessions, that's where fans are gathering. Is there going to be like a delivery service? Uh, you know, I mean, if you have gone out to a restaurant here in California, at least in Los Angeles County, uh, it's very limited. You're not going up to the bar and ordering a drink. Uh, you're sitting at your table with the group of people you're with, five people or whatever it is, four people, and you order your stuff from, with the waitress who has a mask uh, or a waiter or whatever, and they come over and bring you your food. Uh, is there going to be something similar in the Coliseum? They, they don't want you, everyone up going up to the bathroom at once. They don't want everyone waiting in line for a hot dog. So all that stuff, there's uh, some logistical concerns about all of that, uh, the game day experience. So we just don't know uh, at this point. So the good news is USC is preparing for a college football season and preparing to allow fans be in the stands. We don't have all the answers yet, but that's the kind of information that the USC has been sending out. This is really over the last 48 hours. Part of the reason why I wanted to do uh, the show when I did. Uh, let me check these uh, chat room stuff. So, sorry, it's um, I'm going to have to, you know, when I'm talking stuff, I'm going to look at the chat room and see what, uh, you know, if, if anything stands out. If you have a question, maybe put uh, in the YouTube chat room, put like bold question or something so I can see uh, what it is. So, uh, John says, Ryan, you look like a World War II tail gunner with your headphones and ball cap. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's good. Um, yeah, man, how cool would that have been to be like a World War II tail, tail gunner? Uh, no, I went, I did a little, I played a little nine holes today. Uh, so I, that's why I have my little uh, piece there. Oh, I've got to change this. I don't need the same camera and watch. I can, uh, you don't have to see all that other stuff now that we're done with the, uh, the intricacies of everything, all the, uh, you know, the, the data that I wanted to put up there for you guys. Uh, let's see. We got Gwyn Boy. I'm from Bama, but I'm a Trojan fan also. Fight on. Oh, so we got an Alabama fan. So speaking of Alabama, so as of right now, you start fall camp on August 7th. You'll be getting ready for the Alabama game. And I think there's these milestones that you want to hit. Now, is USC, do they have players back on campus yet? No. Uh, does Alabama? Yes. <laughs> so, Okay, maybe a little bit bit behind, um, but the, you know I think you're still doing. I, I, Alabama's not full bore like practicing or anything like that, but you know it's probably a little bit more of an advantage to have everybody on campus before um, you know, and then you kind of work your way in and figure things out. They had some guys test positive; they'll be able to quarantine and all that kind of stuff. So you know USC's still getting there, but I think you just want to hit these milestones, and I think an important one is like the July. I believe it was a July. Let me pull it up again. July twelfth. Um, July 13th. So the summer access where you're going to have really more of interaction with uh, the coaches, with the weight training, conditioning, and uh, film review. And then July 24th, probably even a bigger one. That's the summer access with walkthrough. So you're really out there um, doing things with the coaches. And if that happens and, you know, campuses across the country, a whole bunch of players get sick, Things probably get shut down and, you know, things are going to get delayed. But as of now, like, you want to hit these milestones and, like, oh, players are coming here. Oh, a couple of guys got sick. They go into quarantine. They get better. They come back. Things like that. But right now, it's more of a situation where you just want to hit these milestones. And so far, they have. So this is good news for us. This is good news for people that want to see college football. Obviously, you want to do it safely. And that's why all these protocols and all these procedures are being put into place. So, um, 
let's see, Dave S. So I think they're talking about um, uh, Dave S. Says he has, I have tickets and he plans on going, and that's that's a good point, Dave, because some people don't want to they ha they have tickets but they don't feel comfortable. So just because you're allowed to go to the Coliseum, do you want to? And that's part of the opt in process. So when you are you know season ticket holder, you opt in. You're in the the in group, and anyone that opts out, they can just take them out because, you know, if if everyone opted in, there's no way everyone's going to get tickets. But say half of the people, season ticket holders, opt out, then they're working with a more reasonable number that they can distance out in the uh, Coliseum. And if you, you know, if you had your certain seats, I wouldn't expect to get them because they're going to have to be moving a lot of people again. This has been happening for the last several years because of the Coliseum renovation. Now it's going to happen because of the COVID stuff. Um, so BW says, Texas seems to be pretty aggressive with their reopening. I wouldn't be surprised if fans are allowed into that, uh, USC versus Alabama game. Yeah. Texas has been more, it's been one of those States, uh, you know, Arizona was one. Now we're also hearing there's, you know, increased number of cases in, in some of those States that have opened up more, but I, you know, for me, it's, it's like California has been a little bit more conservative on that side. But you got to watch what these states do when they do open up and what, you know, where are these cases coming from and is it okay? And, you know, are younger people fine? And is it outside events? Are those fine? Like there's just, I think we're going to get a lot more data now. I mean, I think there's going to be data just from watching all the, uh, the protests that were going on and people, you know, there's a lot of people not socially distant, but they're wearing masks. Is that good enough? And maybe that's a situation where, Hey, you can wear a mask. The six feet thing is not as important anymore. As long as you're wearing a mask, you're not going to, you know, sneeze on somebody. That's it's better. I don't know. I think there's data like that that's going to be um, coming out. Uh, Ernesto says, "Any news on the rest of the Pac-12 and returning?" And from yeah, we do. So if you want to get some more Pac-12 news, I also co-host the podcast of Champions. You can find that on any podcasting app uh, with David Woods, and we talked about that. I believe all the other Pac-12 schools outside of California schools are uh, back. Uh, I think the Arizona schools are, uh, Utah was ready to come back early, Colorado. Uh, they're trying to get back. They got a new coaching staff and stuff. I believe all the Pacific Northwest schools and uh, so Cal and Stanford are the other two that aren't. So it's really just the California school. So I think everyone else is. And, you know, the, the California schools are working on it. And it, a lot of it has just have to do with getting approval from their local governments and stuff trying to, to get out there. So yeah. Um, Tito says, hoping to see USC Oregon this year. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be in Eugene. Could be a really good one. Or obviously Oregon uh, pounded USC in the Coliseum last year. But this should be a better uh, USC team. I'm fairly optimistic towards this team. And, you know, you know, I've been kind of a pessimistic person before for a lot of stuff. But I just think they're going to be a lot better on offense. I think they're going to be a lot better on defense. They're going to be a lot better on special teams. Um, they got a good coaching staff around. So we'll see. Uh, what's going on? We got Coley, uh, who's uh, our resident Notre Dame fan, and he's been asking me for weeks uh, when we're having a television. Sorry, Keeley and Shotgun aren't here, Coley, but I'm here. He says, uh, do you know if USC is taking a standard number of fans or will it change by the end of the season when Notre Dame comes uh, in late November? Yeah, as far as like visiting fans, I have no idea. I mean, they, I don't think they know either. They're just trying to figure it out. I'm guessing traveling to games is probably not going to be a thing. Um, I mean, maybe if there's not enough interest, like say they, they put 25,000 fans in the Coliseum. Uh, maybe there's not 25,000 USC fans that want to go and they, they do a lot, some tickets to uh, Notre Dame. Now it might just be kind of family thing, but it's probably not going to be recommended for you to travel to things like football games uh, anyway, at that point. So uh, it's, my guess, Coley, is, is it's going to be like a home fan kind of thing only outside of like friends and family and things like that. But I, I just don't know. I don't think anyone knows that uh, for sure. Um, uh, Geraldo says, thanks for keeping us informed, Ryan. Five stars. Just got my uh, TAF email today uh, and can't wait. So oh, I think it just it kind of cut off. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. Yeah. So if anyone got your, if you're uh, you know a member of the athletic funds, any of those, uh, you know, donor groups, uh, you probably got your email. Um, a hippo says, how about the Alabama game still on? So er there's nothing that's been canceled. Everything's still on. Like there's no, 
nothing's been canceled yet. I know there has been some early declarations from politicians before about this can't happen, that can't happen. Well, all that's kind of been backed off. As of right now, the USC Alabama, USC Alabama game in Arlington is still on. One thing that was changed, we know Notre Dame uh, playing Navy isn't going to happen in Ireland anymore. Uh, I forget where they moved it to. It's like Maryland or something. Um, I don't don't remember exactly what it was, but they they moved that game from Ireland. But as far and I think uh, one of the I think uh, Kentucky or one of the Louisville or someone uh, someone that moved their game for the Kentucky Derby like up a couple of days. So it was like a Saturday game and the Kentucky Derby or something's going to happen. Then they they moved the guy. I forget which school it was, but there's been a couple like slight movements like that, but nothing's been called off uh, at this point. So I think that's good news. Um, and like I said, you just want to keep hitting these milestones. You know, if if the, half the Alabama team gets sick and there's a bunch of players in the hospital, yeah, then I don't know what's going to happen with that game. If that happens to USC, what if it happens to Cal and, you know, a Pac-12 school or an SEC school? Does that impact Alabama? Does it impact USC? Like, we just don't know these situations. You know, we just don't know right now. But the good news is the plans to play, you know, the, the season on time are still in place. I know there were some people advocating. I thought it wasn't a bad idea. Delay the season to like January, February. Just do it now. And then you know you're just going to push it back. Um, they haven't gone that route. They're really going, you know, straight forward towards the season. The NCAA released, I believe, today their, uh, you know, their schedule of what you can do. And I think that reflected what, you know, USC schedule was. And uh, that they're going to go forward with that. It's going to be a setback. If, if, if the season doesn't happen, it's because these plans that you put into place just aren't working and there's setbacks and a lot of people getting sick and things like that. Um, Dave said, Cal sent that out email today outlining student athlete protocols. They're returning Monday the 22nd. Oh, great. Okay. So thank you for that update. Um, I know this stuff was, uh, is kind of, it's all happening uh, right now. Um, so yeah. So uh, Gwyn Boy said Alabama had about eight cases on the team, but they're still practicing. And, and I think that's part of it. And it, you, you talk to people before, you're like, if one player gets sick, everyone stops. Um, and they're not practicing, practicing. They're working out uh, on campus. So it's not like they're running full practices yet. Um, but the, the reason you do these pods and there's the, the, the tracing is going to be a big deal. The testing is a big deal. So there's going to be testing a lot. And then also the tracing where, say, you know, player A gets sick, who's in his group? You know, and those are the people who are going to have to monitor. So anyone that's in this group, you don't have to test the whole team because player A is only around those nine other guys or four other guys or whatever their groups are. Those are the people you got to worry about. Um, so that things like that are, are meant to, if someone gets sick, it's not going to spread all throughout the team. The problem is once, you know, that's for now. Once everyone comes together and you're practicing as a full team, which Alabama's not doing yet, nobody's doing that yet then you're going to exp be exposed to everyone. So right now they're kind of keeping these tighter groups and uh, you know that makes sense. Uh, John has a question. With Alabama losing so many players to graduation in the NFL, does USC really stand a good chance? And do they know who Alabama's QB will be? Uh, my understanding is they don't know the quarterback yet. I mean, Bryce Young's going to be over there. I actually filmed Bryce Young throwing a few weeks back with uh, USC's new uh, quarterback commit, Miller Moss. They were working out with their quarterback coach. He's going to try to compete for it, but obviously not being able to compete in the spring. It's going to be tougher. I think in any situation, a veteran quarterback is going to have an advantage because they've been around, and that's that's the guy you know. Um, there's not a lot of opportunity for Bryce Young to come in and wow everyone and show them uh, what they can do. If he had the whole spring football to do that, that would have been great. He didn't get that. So, you know, it's a tough situation. So I don't know. And as far as like Alabama losers, guys in the NFL every single year, I wouldn't say, well, look at all those guys that got drafted. They're going to suck this year. Like that. No, that's never, <laughs> that hasn't happened. That the, the, they had an off year because they didn't make the college football playoff last year. Like that's at, like the first time Alabama didn't make the playoff. So I wouldn't uh, count, put a stock in because Alabama lost guys. They also had some guys come back too that you expected to go to the NFL and did not. Um, Let's see. We had uh, Dave with a question. Under normal circumstances, when would you and your team apply for media credentials for the September 5th game in Dallas? Oh, it's a good question, Dave. Yeah. So usually um, when we have to do, we apply for any kind of game credentials, it's a couple weeks in advance. Uh, the sports information director, Tim Teslone, would kind of take our information, say he would email me. He'd email like 
if you ran a website, he would email me and say like, hey, how many people do you need for this? They send in all the requests together. Same situation here. Probably would be an online uh, you know, application for, I, we've done this before when we've uh, you know, gone down to Arlington. So I think it was like an online application and you put who you're affiliated with and whoever's in your group. And I think we had like me and Keely and Shotgun and Dan Weber all go down there. Uh, I think Chris Trevino might have did too. But we, so we put all that in there and then go forward. So that's how, kind of how it works. Uh, Coley says, Notre Dame at Navy, at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. Yeah, so it's a small stadium. So it's the first time they're going to play there. Yeah, but they, they had to move that game. It's supposed to be a cool game, obviously, out in uh, you know in Ireland, and that's not going to happen. I just went to Ireland uh, last summer. That was a lot of fun, Ireland, Scotland. Uh, let's see. So Dave says, Jones is a projected, projected starter with uh, Bryce Young as his backup. Um, Jasper Smith says, uh, when the NBA resumes, we'll get a taste of how things will happen if a player gets COVID and infects others. Hope it goes well for their health and give this gives the sports world a glimmer of hope. Yeah, I think it's a good point Jasper is there's a there NBA is different because they can control the environment. They can uh, I was talking to an NBA executive yesterday and he's not going down like he's not going to be with his team. It's going to be really limited what they go to uh, Orlando with and uh it's just going to be limited capacity as who's going to go there. And but that's going to be a bubble kind of environment where college football that you're not going to be able to be in a bubble. These workouts initially Kind of like small bubbles because they're going to have these small groups of people. You're not interacting with the whole team. You're not going to all be in like the same lunchroom all hanging out. Uh, everything you do is cleaned and sanitized and things like that. So, yeah, that's that's what you can do to get ready for the games. But the games themselves, you're going to be hitting and face masks next to people and spitting in their faces and breathing hard and all that stuff. So, yes, that's going to be – I mean – everything could work up until the first game and you could see games across the country and a whole bunch of people getting sick and then everything shuts down. Who knows? We don't know at this point. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But yes, that with the NBA, when we get to see them playing, uh, you're seeing soccer, you know, guys playing soccer. If you watch like ESPN, they have people playing cornhole and they can't even be in this, the box at the same time. That's not a contact sport, but you know, you're playing soccer. They're banging into each other and stuff. Uh, so there's, there's some, you know, some things you could watch. I haven't heard. I'm not, not a big soccer fan, but I haven't heard a whole bunch of the soccer players getting sick. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what that what that does. Uh, Ron A says, thanks for what you do, Ryan. Uh, this this Notre Dame fan loves your Southern Cal work. So informed and funny. Well, thanks. we got a bunch of Notre Dame people uh, watching. Appreciate that. Um, this is from Adrian. Ryan, have you heard the number of season ticket holders are a good guess? Just curious, considering student attending home games as well, the capacity for games this season. Yeah, we don't have any numbers on that. Uh, like I said, July 9th is the opt-in, opt-out date. I'll talk to some of the season ticket people once this starts getting rolling. And they'll be pretty good. I mean, if they can't say officially what it, they'll they'll let us know kind of the direction things are going and we can put some stuff up on uscfootball.com just to get a feel um, for what's going on. Because it's like, yeah, you don't know. And what about the students? Our, our students have to opt in. We don't know about that either. Um, so there might just be a section for students and there's going to be a limited capacity. They're going to allow X amount of students and you can line up or whatever and get in. Uh, so we'll we're curious to see what that does. But thanks, Adrian. Um, Gwyn Boy says, Alabama will still have a good team, but I believe with the air raid offense, USC has BAM. Uh, they'll struggle because their secondary is fairly new. I mean, USC can put up points, and I think you can put up points on anyone. This isn't the old SEC where you're just seeing, you know, nine to three, and you run the football and just don't turn it over. Like you got to score, and uh, USC has the athletes to score, so they just have to be able to do it. The problem is going to be potentially the offensive line. Just Keaton Slovis has a lot of time to throw. That's going to be hard to uh, hard to say. Um, so OG King won free shotgun and Keeley. They were invited, Shaka and Akili were invited to come here into the studio. You know, they don't feel comfortable yet. Everyone has their own reasons. Uh, you know, so there's, I get it. Uh, I was sort of tired of the the remote stuff. I might come up with some different way to do it. We might do like a Zoom thing and put and just kind of broadcast that. It might be a little simpler just because we've had problems with internet. The guys drop it out. There's been a bunch of issues with that. So I just sort of wanted to do like, look, I want to do things in person. Um, and I want to do one of these. And we haven't done one for a while. So I was like, because we've had the kind of newsy stuff over the last couple of days, I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that. But yes, we'd love to have Keely and Shotgun 
uh, back. Steve says, thanks for the solo television. Can we move on from the unknown of fans in the stands uh, to what we do know? Reggie is back. Yeah, you guys want to talk about Reggie Bush uh, for a little bit? So Reggie coming back. Uh, so I was very impressed with the way USC handled it. Basically, the, the morning of the first day that he was allowed to be back with USC, they had all this stuff ready to go. And, uh, you know, guns blazing coming out. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Uh, Reggie doing the, you know, a little bit, not a much of a media tour, but going on Colin Cowherd, and, you know, who's friendly towards USC. We've had him on our show here. Um, yeah, I think that's a big deal, like having uh, Reggie back. They do want to get him involved. They want him working, you know, not working. They want him to be part of the process and help with recruiting and help with a lot of things. And I feel like, you know, talking to, you know, seeing him talk to, you know, Colin and what he said in his quotes uh, around USC, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And there's going to be a path to getting his Heisman back. Uh, Dan Weber would like to see it happen sooner rather than later. Mike Bone was like, hey, we want to do this. It's important to Reggie. It's important to us. Um, I don't think that's going to happen for a while because they got a lot of other problems to deal with, like just everything that we talked about. But it's going in the right direction. And uh, I think it's a really good thing. You, There's no reason he should have been disassociated with. That was just the NCAA overreaching. Uh, really just, I mean, and, and in the beginning, if you remember, Dan Weber, we were writing stuff about the missteps on McNair, how the NCAA screwed this up, giving USC those sanctions. And most of the mainstream media thought we were full of crap and it just wasn't real. Uh, now they all, they're on board. Like everyone thinks that that was stupid what happened to USC, um, that NCAA completely overreached. They just, you know, punished the hell out of USC where there was no benefit. Like whatever Reggie's family got down in San Diego, you know, you expected USC to know about, but USC didn't benefit at all from that. So it just didn't make much sense. Um, so I think this is, these are good steps in the right direction and I'm happy to, you know, that Mike Bone was able to uh, bring USC there. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see, Coley says, it's been a while. Any chance Keeley returns a Bruins fan? Uh, no, Ke Keeley's not a, not gonna be a Bruins fan. Uh, BW says, Mr. 619 is back. Yeah, and then Hippo Cracker says, will Reggie be a recruiting weapon? He's been a recruiting weapon. Um, we've done tunnel vision shows here where they, the guys, I think I did, when I interviewed Michael Jackson, the, the wide receiver, USC's wide receiver commit from Vegas. He mentioned Reggie Bush. The guys mentioned Reggie Bush all the time. They were two or three years old when he was winning the Heisman. So he's a recruiting, he was a recruiting weapon then, but now that he's actually going to be around, they put the number five back in the Coliseum. I think that's going to help. Obviously, get his Heisman back. That's going to help. So I think these are all positive things uh, for USC. Uh, how come there aren't many tickets available for the first game? I, I no idea. I don't know where you'd be finding tickets right now. They don't even they don't even know how to sell it. They, they, yeah, I don't think that's a thing because they don't even know. They don't. They have no idea what the the seats are going to be like. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, let's see. Jasper says, Paul D wanted to destroy USC plain and simple. Yeah, the former Miami athletic director, Dan Weber, buys into this. I do too, that you know, they Miami got these horrible sanctions because all the cheating and stuff, and that actually benefited their program. And Paul D wanted to set an example for a USC team that was just killing everyone um, and, and give USC a worse punishment. There was no reason to justify a worse punishment, but that seemed like that's why they did what they did. It's as simple as that. Um, let's see. Uh, we got... This is flying here. Uh, the reason Alabama, so Gwyn Boy said the reason Alabama recruiting seems to be slowing down is because they're consistently, constantly losing their recruiting coaches to other schools. Yeah, there's been a ton of turnover uh, with the staff, but Nick Saban's been masterful of uh, replacing those guys. So um, let's see. Super OC Holmes, Alabama under Klaspin. Leave for the NFL is an early sign Saban. Uh, is getting uh, the Saban tune is getting old for the players. I, I mean, I, you want to start counting Alabama out. I, I just wouldn't be in that. I mean, Al, Nick Saban has a, a, just a machine that's rolling, and I'm not saying USC doesn't have a chance or anything, but I'm just saying like if you're gonna like try to predict this is the year of Alabama's demise, like I, I just wouldn't. I would not go there at all. Um, let's see. Oh, Dave said I was talking about USC Bama tickets. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think they know what's going on with that either. So they probably sold tickets, but I mean they they can't put everyone that bought a ticket in the stands right now. There's just not no way they're going to be able to do that. 
Coley says, in your opinion, do you think that Coach Held will have more or less or the same amount of control of the in-game calls? I don't know. I mean, I think Clay Helton is going to have, you know, the overall control of what's going on. Are you going forward on fourth down? Uh, you know, things like that. Kick a field goal or punt or whatever. But I think on defense, he's not going to be making any play calls. It's going to be Todd Orlando. On offense, he's not making any play calls. That's going to be Graham Harrell. And I think Sean Snyder is going to be pretty much calling what happens on special teams. And so I think it's going to be more of that CEO role that we've seen uh, from Clay Helton. So I don't think much of that is going to change. I think that's what you're going to see from Clay. Uh, Jasper, do you think Kiffin will be will still be the Ole Miss coach by the time the home and home series arrives? What is that? I think it's 2025 or 26. I forget when it really is. But no, no I don't think Lane Kiffin will still be there. That's tough. I mean – to, for Lane Kiffin to still be uh, at Ole Miss like six years from now or whatever it is, he's got to have a, a, a level of success that they would want to keep him around, but not the level of success that someone would want to hire him away. So I think the more likely thing would be he doesn't have enough success and gets fired because it's not easy to win at Ole Miss. But he'd have to be going to like decent bowls, you know, nine wins a season and beaten an LSU or an Alabama like every other year it's like stuff like that uh that's tough but if he if he's doing that uh, it's too good then someone else is going to hire him away so for him sticking around there six years just seems unlikely to me all right uh let's see Nolan is that the Miller Moss flips his commitment since he is now going to modern day oh is it likely I'm sorry that Miller Moss no, he's he's all USC. Um, it probably helps USC that he's going to modern day, which is a pipeline school. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything you know going on. There's going to be an Elite Eleven camp. He's going to be at that. So they're there. I think they're going to announce that pretty soon if they haven't already. He's still planning on going to that from the, the people I've talked to around him. And yeah, there's no wavering of his commitment. He grew up a USC fan. He just wants to go to USC, so I don't think there's going to be any issue there. Um, uh, let's see. We got Dan. Will USC running game be more of an emphasis as a way to minimize hits on Slovis? So I think it starts with the offensive line, uh, Dan, of what's going on there. You got to minimize the hits because if Slovis goes down, the quarterback depth is a real concern. Obviously, you got Matt Fink and no one else on scholarship. Uh, I think you got to be able to run the football more. I think they would have last year. Injuries really sort of limited what Graham Harrell could do. Like first, you lose your starting quarterback, uh, and you lose multiple quarterbacks, and then you lose all your running backs. Um, there was a lot of issues on the the running game side, and the offensive line didn't perform as well as it should. So, I think if you get the keep the running backs healthy. You got to have a steady stream of running the football. I think they do still want to run it like 40% of the time. So if they do that, I think that should keep some of the pressure off Keaton Slovis. But the offensive line is going to have to perform well enough to allow that to happen. Uh, let's see. BW, Ryan, any thoughts on name image likeness going to affect in Florida in 2021? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think all of these state uh, laws that have passed, California doesn't, doesn't go into effect until 2023. Florida is, I think, one of the first ones, if not the first one, 2021. That's why you're seeing a lot of this happen in the NCAA trying to get the you know Congress to like uh, get an injunction so all these state things don't kick in and all that stuff. So uh, I'm really curious to see what happens there. But we're gonna, you know, by you know there will be name, image, and likeness compensation in some way, shape, or form uh, by next season. So they, you know, they I think there's the next votes in like. July or something. I forget what the timeline is, but yeah, I think that's going to happen. And all these states putting the laws into place, especially with Florida, you know, doing it so quickly, there's not a lot of time. They got to do that. They don't want all these individual, you know, lawsuits and players and doing things. And, and they want some kind of unifer, universal uh, law or, or rule that they can control. So yeah, I think it's going to be, that's going to be happening fast. And there's going to be some, you know, pressure on the NCAA. So watch that. It's always fun to see the NCAA squirm, and I think they will. Uh, let's see. Hippocracker, last time we played Alabama, we had no running games. Same this go around. I think you can run the football when you have a, a great passing attack because you're, people are worried about the pass and you can run. The problem with a team like Alabama is just they're so stout. They got so many studs on the defensive line. 
it's one of those things where you got to play pretty well. You got to block well if you want to run against Alabama, and that USC hasn't done that. Um, I'm guessing if USC has success against Alabama, it's going to be throwing the football, not necessarily running football. That's just my take now. Um, John, will USC start fall camp with all of its running backs? Any carryover injuries? None that I can uh, recall right now. John, I think, uh, I mean, we haven't seen the same really Stephen Carr. Oh, uh, Marquis Stepp had something too, uh, which my brain's not really working right now. It's been a long day. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anyone's going to come into the, the season as, as injured unless something happens, like a Kyle Ford, someone gets injured during these workouts. Um, Scott says, do you think Pallier will finally put it together this year? I do. One of my predictions is, that the USC linebacker core in general is going to play at a much higher level. It just seemed like a forgotten position group to me. Todd Orlando is the guy. He's the linebacker coach. And I think they're going to feature these linebackers much more than Clancy Pendergast did. And, you know, guys like Palaye, Noote Ote, and, uh, you know, uh, you know I, everyone, Jordan Iasefa and all those guys, I think you're going to see them perform at high level. You know, you got Hunter Eccles or, uh, you know, Giuliano Falanico, like all these dudes, I think they're just going to play better uh, with Todd Orlando because he's really focused on linebackers as the linebacker coach. Uh, Bob says, thoughts on the Pac-12 being inferior to the SEC? I don't know. What kind of question is that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, duh. Uh, no, the SEC is way better than the Pac-12. The good thing for USC is they have the they can be the Alabama. You know, they if USC gets their crap together, they get their act together, they can be the, on that level. Not a lot of Pac-12 schools can. USC is one of them, but they've been shooting themselves in the foot and they can't get out of their own way. So I would say that. Um, against Alabama, Jasper says, I want to see Marquis Step get the ball 20, 25 times. If he does, that means they're running football well because if he's just running into a line and not getting anything, they're not going to be able to hand him the ball that much. Jamal, uh, what player that no one is talking about will surprise people? Oh, God. That no one is talking about. I and mean, we try to talk about everybody. Um, let's see. I mentioned this on the podcast that I felt like Ben Griffiths, the punter, who everyone was hyping last year, and then we all got crushed. Anyone that talked about, you know, good about him because he didn't perform well. I think with the new special teams coach, they're not going to limit him. They're just going to let him boom the ball. I think that's going to be, uh, I, I think it's going to be a big benefit for for USC, just having him back there doing it that way. Um, I mean, see, people are talking about like Drake London. Okay. You know, he's going to be really good. <sighs> I mean, Daniel Amato Bebe, there's potential there. I love Josh Follow. I'd like to see uh, what what he can do. I don't think you're going to see anyone on the offensive line. Um, I mean, you know, the defensive tackles, you know, Peely, Tuafele, uh, Tui Pelotu. Um, I just don't know if anyone's going to really pop out from that group that you don't know. I mean, you know, Drake Jackson, uh, maybe like a Jacob Lichtenstein, like, you know, see, he's just looks like he's transferred, you know, his body significantly. Um, you know, can I Malga you've seen before, uh, you know, maybe like a Raylan go forth. I said the linebackers are going to be better. Uh, we've seen most of the defensive backs, you know, I don't think there's anyone coming out of the blue there. So, Hard to say. I, w I wouldn't say. No one's popping out of my mind that would be coming out of the blue. Um, Dave says Ben Griffiths, Australian for mediocre. He, trust me, I, he's not going to be mediocre this year. This is my that's my prediction. Um, Brian wants to know will they allow cheerleaders to attend the game? So, like we said, all the traditions. There's going to be limitations. I could see the cheerleaders kind of spaced out. Maybe they're not doing those tight routines. The song girls anymore. Uh, maybe the the cheer squad that they're out there. They can do things just distant. Um, you know, getting people to cheer. I could see that just because there's, you know, there's the potential of social distancing, but probably not those same kind of uh, dance routines that we saw before. Uh, Tito, Max Williams. Now that's a good one. Uh, I like Max Williams a lot. Um, we got to see him some last year. He kept getting banged up. He's not the biggest dude in the world, but man, he just has a lot of heart and he just, he balls. So you got a new set. I mean, you got a whole new defensive staff. Any one of those guys could come up. Like, you, did you not, you know, you love Hunter Eccles. You don't see enough of him. You might see a whole lot more of him now. I and mean, we just don't know. We don't know what they, because we didn't get to see spring football. We don't know who's going to perform well in this new scheme. And there might be guys that just kind of come out of the blue a little bit that maybe saw a little, but not, you know, quite as much. Uh, 
Will Gary Bryant see action this year? Potentially, he he brings something to the table. You know, he's a different kind of receiver with that, that with that breakaway speed. Um, you know, they lose uh, Velas Jones. Yeah, maybe you, you see a little bit of him, especially with uh, Kyle Ford being out. I mean, they're you know, I don't know um, how much depth there's going to be, and if they're going to use eight or ten receivers instead of just like four or five. So if they do that, uh, you know, I think you could potentially see him as a true freshman coming out there. So it's not, I don't think it's that hard for a true freshman receiver to get out there. Um, let's see. Jasper says, I wish the surprise player is Trout. Uh, defensive line plays on a level of Mike Patterson or Cedric Ellis. Yeah, Trevor Trout is a dude that like I liked coming out of high school, but just hasn't seemed to take that next step. You got a bunch of seniors, um, you know, a bunch of veterans in front of them right now. It's harder for see, see someone like him as a breakout player, Jasper, just because of the people in front of him. And I just haven't seen it from him yet. I liked him a lot coming out of high school, but just haven't seen it where it looks like, oh, that guy's that guy's a player. Like I haven't watched practice and said that the Trevor Chow guy, he, there's no way he can't be on the field. Uh, we'll probably wrap this up in a second. Um, Adrian Ryan, is there any update on Solomon Tuil Lopupu's health? I believe he could give us a big boost. Yeah, we put some stuff up on the Peristyle a while back. So I think uh, I think people are pretty optimistic about Solomon Tuilapupa. Another guy, I think, that could uh, shine with that linebacker group. All right. Um, BW, imagine a Trojan game without the band breaks my Aztec heart. Yeah. <sighs> the band is, like, not really socially distant. So I think song girls are one thing. The band is another and uh, maybe it's a limited band you know it's a spaced out band and i don't know how that affects acoustics and things like that um and jasper says solo is never discussed on the show until we actually see him on the field and in games yeah that's that can't be a policy because <laughs> uh, i think that, that was shotgun's policy i didn't mind talking about him he like the practice we did see him uh last year he like broke up some passes he looked really good and then we just never really saw him again uh, from Drew, do you think the Pac-12 will ever return to its former glory in the 2006 era? I think that there's the potential there. Um, I think you know you could see Oregon as a potential you know power program. You can see Washington as I mean even Cal. I think they're doing some good things with Justin Wilcox, which I never thought I'd say that. It starts with USC though, um, Drew. You got to get USC back on top, and if USC is like in the you know playoff picture every year that's going to you know that's the tide that lifts all the boats it's really hard for the rest of pac 12 to be i mean the rest of pac 12 can beat up on usc when usc is down but are they going to be elite uh we've seen stanford you know do some things we've seen oregon do some things and break through you know go to the playoffs and stuff but not really win a title there um i think it's just hard to maintain without usc you kind of need usc it really helped, you know, Aaron Rodgers that USC was really good uh, when he was at Cal back in those days. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's there's a potential still there, but US it starts with USC. USC has to be great. USC needs to be great again, uh, and they're not. They're not great right now. Uh, Who is the new band director from John? I have no idea. I, thought, I think he named. I thought he named a successor, but I don't. I don't remember. Um, but we loved talking, and we had. Uh, we had him on our podcast and everything, and it was, uh, you know, Dr. Bartner, and it was great. So uh, it was sad to see him go. Uh, let's see. We'll do, I think, one more. Uh, BW Pac-12 has so many awesome head coaches right now. If the schools can keep these guys nailed down, I see great things in the future. Yeah, I mean, I like some of the coaches. I mean, I really like Chip Kelly as a hire. It's been a disaster. So UCLA is probably going to replace their head coach. Uh, not a big Carl Durrell fan. Who knows? We'll see if that works out. But, you know, in the North, I like Jonathan Smith. I like, uh, you know, um, Rolovich getting hired at Washington State. That's a great replacement for Leach. I don't know enough about Jimmy Lake at Washington, but, you know, you're going to keep that continuity with Chris Peterson. I think they're going to recruit well. Um, you know, so I think there's potential there. I like Mario Cristobal at, at Oregon. They're definitely making uh, waves. You know, Justin Wilcox has done a really good job. That offense gets moving. And he hired Bo Baldwin before, which put up a lot of points at Eastern Washington. But they just weren't that good. I'm not a big, uh, you know, for Stanford, though, it's just like David Shaw, I don't know. It just seems like it, he's not, you know, they went four and eight last year and didn't change anything. Um, that's, you know, USC went five and seven and you had to like fire half your staff and they should have hired, fired more. 
Um, not making any changes after a four and eight start. I just I'm not really optimistic on Stanford right now. But there's some good coaches. I mean, I, Herm's done really well. Uh, Kevin Seven probably not going to be around a lot longer. Obviously, Kyle uh, Whittingham is is great. So there's definitely some really good coaches, but there's also some guys I think are going to get blown out in the next year or two. So it's not like full great coaching uh, across the board there. Um, let's see. So we'll do one last one. Uh, Geraldo, kudos to the new athletic department leadership. It's refreshing to see forward thinking from USC athletics. Oh, hundred percent. It's just so much better to have experienced administrators there. People don't know what they're doing. They just, you had people that didn't know what they were doing and just doing the same things over and over because that's the way they've done them. And you need to bring in some outside, you know, info and insight uh, into a department. It just, it was years, decades since they had done something like that. They kept hiring people that have zero experience. So you're just going to keep doing exactly what you were doing before. People that would come in and ask, hey, how do you do things? No one that's going to come in and go, here's how we're going to do things. Because they've never done it before. So they have no idea what you should be doing. Uh, and if they did, it would probably be a disaster too. If they're like, hey, we're going to do things this way. And they've never done it before. So you bring in an experienced athletic director and you're going to get a lot better decision making. I'm not going to say every decision he makes is going to be great. I'm not saying his first big one was, I think, a mistake, you know, keeping Clay Helton. But s since then, he's made so many, you know, really good decisions. Things are going in the right direction. So I think those are all positives. All right. Uh, let's see. Whew, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, we're about an hour or so. It's, it's hard to just talk by yourself and like read all the stuff. I didn't really change. I had some like different pictures and stuff like, oh, this is an empty Coliseum where the games be played like that. Here's Mike Bone, who we were talking about uh, before. Keaton Slovis. Could he win the Heisman? I don't know. Clay Helton. On the hot seat again? Who knows? But he's made some good changes this offseason. So we'll see. Uh, what direction that goes. So I just wanted to kind of pull all that together. We appreciate everyone uh, tuning in uh, to this and we'll try to get back to normal. Uh, if you want, you know, express your opinion to uh, Shotgun Akili, see if they want to come back in the studio. We might do a different version of the uh, remote one. The way it was working before, I don't think we could keep doing it. it just there was too clunky. So we'll, we'll play with it a little bit. And maybe uh, I think I can bring up a Zoom window here and, and we can do it that way. Um, and try something else remotely. But, uh, you know, I, I'd love to get them back in the studio. We'll see if we can do that safely. We, I don't want anyone to not feel safe. If they don't feel safe, there's no point in having them come in. Um, so we'll see if that, you know, changes going forward. See if we can do some more remote stuff. And we'll try to get back on a regular tunnel vision schedule. But um, if you, thanks to all you guys for tuning in. We're going to have a lunch with a Trojan tomorrow. So I'll be back here talking to you. Not by myself, though. I will have USC safety Talanoa Hufunga. So he's going to be on Lunch with the Trojans. So Thursday, 2 p.m., I will uh, – it's not done yet. So if you're watching this live, I will put it up on our YouTube page. I will put it up on uscfootball.com. So we'll talk to him about what he thinks about the uh, you know players returning and and all that stuff, You know what he thinks about you know Dante Williams and uh, Craig Nivar, the secondary coaches, and – uh, Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator and all that. So that should be a fun one. So tomorrow, Thursday, today's Wednesday, right? I just, I'm confused what day is. Thursday, 2 p.m. I will be right here in the same chair, but next to me on this side will be Talanoa Hufanga. So uh, thanks to USC Sports Information for setting that up and uh, should be good. We'll try to get, we've got some coaches. I thought we'd try to get some players coming in now, especially once they're uh, on their way back and uh, coming back to USC. So that should be fun. All right. Well, appreciate all you guys uh, tuning in and watching. So thanks for uh, joining me. Uh, if you're watching the replay or listening to the replay, thanks for, for tuning in. And we, I promise we'll try to do more of these Tunnel Vision shows. Our, our kind of regular schedule was Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Uh, I'd love to get back uh, on that schedule. So we'll see if we do that. And we'll we'll come up with uh, some different ways that we can get Keeley and Shotgun back because we love having those guys in there. All right. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm Ryan Abraham. And that's it. No one. Oh, let me put the other one up. Hi, everybody from up here. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in uh, to Tunnel Vision. And we will talk to you next time.